it's time we got our feet wet in Apple's Final Cut Pro. Now, I can't think of any better way to get started than to introduce you to the interface. Because I'll tell you what, we're going to be spending a whole lot of time staring right at that. So let's start in the upper left and work our way around. What do you say? In the upper left, right up here, are your libraries. Now, you can use this option right here to collapse that if you need the room. Libraries hold all of our stuff, our media, audio, video, whatever it is that's going into the elements in the library. There are two parts to a Final Cut Pro project. Actually, there's about 102. But the two that you have to have is you have to have libraries with media in them, and you have to have a project, which is down here. Now, we're not going to make a project in this lesson. Let's just look at what we have. And I did do one thing. I took the liberty of loading one video so you could see something over there. If I come into this area, now I'm not clicking my mouse. I'm just simply moving it. That's called skimming. Now, skimming allows me to go backward and forward very quickly. We'll get into how that's going to help you when you do editing later, but you can skim. I've turned off one default, audio skimming right here. Now, if you don't like skimming, you can turn that off too. But audio skimming is you hear my voice, and I don't think you want to hear me going backward and forward. To me, it's annoying most of the time, and I turn that off. Now, it's easy with the shortcuts, the letter S on your keyboard or Shift S for audio skimming. You don't have to come here. Keyboard shortcuts, if you know anything about me, are a pretty big deal. So we can skim, we can go up there. Let's look at some of our options down here. You have the number 30 seconds right there, 30S. That's how big each one of these clip areas is, 30 seconds. If I move that, I can put them all together into one. Now, it's all still up here, but it's all in one frame. If I come down here, I can take it all the way to one half of a second, and that's a lot of frames, I want to tell you. Let's take it back to default for now. You can also, coming back over here, view it as clips or view it as a film strip. Up to you. Over here, if you click, you can choose the clip height. And you can show the waveform if you want to. And I'll leave that off for now. Over here in the viewer, you have some options for editing over here. Transform, crop, distort. We'll talk about those as the chapters go on. We can play it right here. Now, if I play it, the audio will come on. You also have a button over here. If I click that button, I will go to full screen, and it will automatically begin playing it in full screen. Up here, you can decide how big you want it to be. Fit is the default. Over here, you have an option that allows you to change the display. Now, the quality option, look at that. It says better quality or better performance, and you say, well, of course I want better quality. Think of it this way. It's not the final product. It's only working here. So if you like, say, for example, the way I look up there, I'm going to look even better when the product is produced because I'm choosing better performance. So I'm going to leave that alone. And as a matter of fact, those are defaults. We'll talk more about these later. Let's come down over here. These options over here deal with when you've got stuff done in your timeline where you can give it a star, make it a favorite, add things. You have tools over here. This 100% is background tasks. Now, if I click that button, it will open up the background tasks right here. And you can see these are the things it does in the background, including a very important one, rendering. It's all done in the background. So if you've got a really good system, you might not even notice anything happening as Final Cut Pro works to kind of catch up with you. Let me go ahead and close that. You also have a number, and that number corresponds to the time code on where I am if I skim, just like this. Scrubbing is done on the timeline. Skimming is done up there. If I click here, it will open up the audio area, so I can watch my audio. And then you have buttons over here that are going to be more active when you actually start doing things down here. But let me show you some of these things. If you click here, we can balance color, audio enhance. If you click here, you've got things like effects. You want to make your video look like 50s TV. Age it. Artifacts. Up to you. There's a ton of things in here. There really are. If you have, and I am speaking to Mac people, aren't I? This is not an Apple and a Windows program. It's Mac only. So you should know about iPhoto and Photo Booth. I do have one image that I took. If I want to use that, I can. Your music allows you into, I love this, iTunes. And if you know anything about iTunes, I'm sure you do, you have a music area. You have a movie area. For example, that's where I got the video you're looking at. I loaded it into iTunes. Now, if you're like me, you also have movies like Avatar, As Time Goes By, Big Trouble in Little China. I can use those if I want to, but do understand one thing, copyright, 
these movies are not there for us to use. They're there for me to enjoy if I got a couple of minutes to watch one. But yes, it's got everything in here, everything in iTunes. I love that, including Final Cut Pro sound effects. The next button over opens up transitions. Some of these you can actually watch. You say, well, what does a black hole or a band or a bloom, what does it do? Just come over to it and skim across it. You don't have to drag, just move your mouse. Now, you won't see trees and mountains, but you will see your video clips. Up here, titling. Some of these are pretty intense, I want to tell you. And some are static. Over here, you have generators, even things like placeholders. Over here, you have themes. And some of these are actually pretty interesting. You will insert your own images or videos into those places and change the theme. Finally, over here, this button here opens up the area known as the inspector. Of course, you have less room up at the top to work, but if you're on the timeline and you have something selected, it gives you more information about what you have selected. For example, some of these themes allow you to add images. We could click on my video and actually balance the color, and it would give me the information to do that up in that window. If I don't need it, I usually just go ahead and do this and close it. The last button over here allows me to share. For example, what are you doing, Andy? I'm making a DVD. Well, when I'm done, click DVD, and I'll show you how to set these up in preferences. It's kind of like the last thing you do, but notice how we can multipurpose this. We can take one video, one movie, and put it into all kinds of different formats. You do have some other options down here, but they don't come alive until we create a project, so we'll save those for another lesson. I think we've done enough for now. Get to know Final Cut Pro's interface. Like I said, we're going to be spending a whole lot of time here.